Are your blocks small or at a square? Or maybe you've collected blocks from a bunch of quilters and they are all slightly different sizes. Sewing small is a common problem for all quilters. Even experienced sewists find that they sew small when they quilt for the first time. I have five ways to deal with small blocks, so stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. Who knew that making square blocks could be so hard? When I started quilting, it took me several years to figure out the tricks to sewing straight, accurate cutting, and ironing well. So my blocks turned out to be the shape and size that they were supposed to be. And just in case you are new to my channel, I have already made a video series about those skills and I'll link them in the notes below. Even if you are precise in your execution, Shrinkage due to steam, humidity, and fraying can play havoc with your blocks. Here are five ways to deal with them. If this is one of your first quilts, you may be stressing over the imperfections. But trust me, a lot is forgiven once you get the binding on. You are learning so much about quilting with every block you make. Color, pattern, symmetry, a quarter inch seam, and pressing that years from now, you will look back fondly on this quilt and see how far your skills have grown. This is my first finished quilt. The seams are not straight, my corners are not nesting, and some blocks are even at a square. But it turned out just fine. So just sew the blocks together and let it be what it is. Measure all your blocks and see how much variance there is. If it's just one or two outliers, I would either remake the block or just simply incorporate it in the back. But if there are a variety of sizes, it might be best, depending on your quilt pattern, just to cut them all down to the size of your smallest block. Press your block first to be sure that it's flat. Then center your block on your cutting mat. You might want to use washi or painter's tape to mark your ruler at the new size just to keep it easy to see. And rotate as you cut to keep it square. If your ruler slips, add first aid tape to the bottom to add grip. It might be painful to cut down points or you might worry about points not lining up. But we have a saying in quilting, if you can't see it from a galloping horse at 50 feet, don't worry about it. And honestly, it's true. You can't see any of the mistakes in my first sampler quilt from here. And the quilt will still be full of warmth and love. Even more experienced quilters have issues with squareness. If you have many seams in the same block, chances are it will be out of square. It can also be due to small variations in your quarter inch seam compounding as the block is built and sometimes your attention just wanders a little. If your variance is less than 1 8 of an inch, then you can mark your sew line. Take a piece of template plastic or cardboard and cut it to the finished dimension of your blocks. Next, center your block with the good size down and align the major lines in the block parallel to the lines on your cutting mat. Then take a marking pencil. I like to use this one because it holds three different colored leads and I can choose the one that shows up the best. Then trace the finished dimensions on the back of the block. Now do the same for the block or pieces of sashing that it will be sewn to. With the good sides together, align the sew lines. I like to pin them so that the blocks don't shift. With the pin head towards me, I can easily pull them out while I sew. Set the seams with a hot iron, then roll the seam over and finger press. Then press with a hot iron. No one ever will know that it was small. Sometimes it's easier just to make all your blocks bigger and then cut them down to the same size. And these strips of fabric that you're adding are called coping strips. And they work best if you alternate between blocks, adding to the sides of your block and then to the top of one with to the top and then the sides of the other so that you don't need to worry about nesting seams. 
To figure out what strip size to use, first decide how large you want your blocks to be. Then find the size of your smallest block and subtract a quarter of an inch from all sides to find the finish size. Then the strips you will need will be the new block size minus the old block size divided by two plus a half inch for the seam allowance. So for example, I want this block to finish at eight inches and this block is five and a half, which means it would finish at five. So eight minus five is three, divided by two is one and a half, plus half inch for the seam allowance, which means my strips should be two inches wide. And since my sides are different lengths, I cut them as I use them. Now this will work perfectly for your smallest block, but your larger blocks will need to be trimmed down. Be sure to center the block first, then rotate to cut. Now all the finished blocks are the same size. Note that your coping strips can be a different color or fabric with every block, or different colors on each strip within each block. There are no rules. Now, sometimes you have blocks that are not only different sizes, but more rectangles than square or have slanting sides. This can be common when you have blocks made by a lot of different quilters who use different tools and might be of different abilities as well. Wonky coping strips can disguise these issues by tilting your blocks off square. Now you could use the same method as in the previous example by making your coping strips wider, then turning your block and trimming. However, that method means that all your edges will be off grain, which means they can be stretchy and prone to fraying. And I dislike all the wastage. So I prefer this method. As in the last method, to figure out what size strips to use, you need to decide how big you want your finished blocks to be. Then find the size of your smallest block and subtract a quarter of an inch from all sides to find the finished size. In this method, you take the new block size minus the old block size, and this time, instead of dividing in half, you add one and a half inches to the strip size. So in my previous example, eight minus five is three, plus one and a half inches for four and a half inch strips. Find an intersection on your cutting mat between the vertical lines and the horizontal. Fold your coping strips in half. Align the fold on the horizontal. Now pivot your strip for how much tilt you want. A little will go a long way. Put a short ledge of masking tape along the top edge of the coping strip. Put the center of your block at the intersection of the lines then lie the strip flat. Now adjust your coping strip until the bottom point just touches the outside edge of the block. Cut the coping strip parallel to the vertical lines, then cut it along that horizontal line. So one piece to the top and one piece to the bottom, then repeat with the other side. Remember to center the side of the block on the center line and cut the sides parallel to the sides of the block. You can have all your blocks tilt the same way or reverse the tilt by flipping your coping strips and blocks over and cutting from that side. Again, you can mix up the colors between blocks or within the blocks to find some fun layouts. Just a note, when you cut your blocks down or make them larger, it affects the overall size of your quilt. So you may need to do some math to check the dimensions that they still work for the size of your project. So take a good look at your blocks and decide what method will work best for you. And remember, no matter which method you choose, your quilt will still be full of warmth, love, and worthy of a label. Gnome Angel and I are just about to embark on another 100 Days 100 Blocks Challenge. If you would like to join in the fun, I'll leave a link in the notes below. I'll also leave a link to my Quilt Along playlist full of tips and tricks for success. Take care and I'll see you next time.